Okay, some tips for girls who want to improve their screaming or who are starting to learn how to scream. There is about five things, main things you should know. First off is with your um, breathing. Depending on the style and how but you want to scream, whether it's deathcore or hardcore or whatever, um, that depends on how much air you take in and how much air you use while you're screaming. Now, when I say screaming, not really screaming, it's more growling. So, um, to start off, if you're a beginner, you need to like practice to growl like a dog. And um, none of this at all should hurt your throat. And if it is, you're doing it wrong. So you should either watch more videos or just keep on practicing, but just a regular growl or some people describe it as when people get mad, they really talk when they're like really mad. I guess people grunt when they're really mad. I don't do that, but I guess other people do. So, um, it's all for growling. And once you're like used to your growling or your voice and your throat doesn't hurt, then move on to speaking, like using words by your growling. And... Um, you should try to, um, cover other people's songs. Like, find an artist that, um, that you're comfortable with who doesn't talk too fast, talk, mean like, scream, talking too fast. And someone who, um, I don't want to see as easy to copy, but someone who's, like, um technique and style is close to what you want yours to be and then um listen to them for a while print out a sheet of lyrics and mark every time they take a breath in and you should do the same so when you hear them take a breath and you should be taking a breath in and sometimes that breath is just a little like a tiny second between like words and you can barely tell but once you're used to looking for stuff like that it's where you can become easier and easier so um look for that and um the, the number one thing breathing is really really important because like um i used to say accenting but um it's just really if you're putting more force behind what you're saying and you want more of a growl that's going to use more of air up and um if you still have a whole like a rest of a line to say then you want to use like that um not force in the last word or beginning word and if you're just talking you don't want any accent or any forced words then you have to learn how to control your stomach so um you get an even amount of air in every word you say now that might sound easy to you but uh, once you start screaming um it might become a little difficult or you might find it a lot harder than you thought just really practice that and um one of the little tips I have to say for that, for number one thing, is that um, try to be, like, really pumped up when you're practicing. Like, don't decide to practice when you're tired and you might go to sleep. You know, just practice, like, if you're, like, if you're fully awake or if you're hyper, then you should try practicing because um, your, your blood's going to be, like, pumped up already. So you don't have to like struggle taking in all the air. The air will come in fully or ready in your lungs. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, athletes don't sit down for one second and get up and start like running. They exercise before they start running or doing anything. Same thing with yelling. You need to like get warmed up and get your heart beating and you know, your blood pumping through your veins before you um, start yelling. It will, it will sound, there's a big difference you will hear you can hear the sound like this divert like um you can just hear it and um the second thing what i have to say that a tip or for people who are beginning is um the the um the way you form your lips and you really talk when you pronounce words like um you may not like think of this at all for yelling but you need to like exaggerate like syllables or certain like letters when you're speaking them like if it's a t you need to like really like tss, tss, like really force that t out or the s out because um 
when you're yelling, it makes my sound blurred together. And you may not know this, but um, the better you are at yelling, the more audible your words would be, meaning people will be able to understand what you're saying better. And you'll find this in bands. You listen to um, a first band's album, and they're screaming, and you listen to the most recent one, then you'll hear a big difference in how you're screaming. That um, the newest album, they'll, they're more audible. You can understand what you're saying. And you want that to happen. Unless you're doing that kind of style where you don't want people to understand what you're saying. But, um, and then also, um, if you're writing your own lyrics, you want to, like, break down, like, each stanza and each line, depending on your style. So, like, if you want to talk a little fast, then you have to find a way and look in your lyrics that you wrote or whatever. And, um, find a way for your breathing again. Um... Which way to accent this or to do that with, to go high, go low. And that brings me up to my next point, number three, is pitch um, and range of your voice. Um, if you're just starting out, it's very important for you to find your highest pitch can go and the lowest pitch you can go, the deep and how high pitch can go. And you can tell, like, if you're going as low as you can, your voice will be hurting you. Same thing, you're going as high as you can, your throat should be hurting you. And once you find that point, don't ever go to that point again because that ruins your vocal cords. So know your limits and um, don't try breaking those limits because they hurt your voice a lot. And um, when you're practicing, starting out, you should practice maybe an hour and slowly progress to two hours at the most and make sure where you're yelling that you're drinking. You mean, like, I can go with two hours without drinking water or tea, whatever like that, but um, it, just, it just depends on the person, so always have a drink nearby, and um, point number four is, um, which kind of goes in with number three, is um, your lips. When you're doing a really like low pitch sound, your lips are going to like, you want your bottom lips to like come out more, I guess. Like I found that um, when I'm doing really low pitch um, sounds that I start off with my mouth being an O and then I end it like like I'm growling like my lips low and if you're going high um whatever like if you're starting out like being regular pitch then going high pitch at the end of the word or whatever like that then your mouth may be more open like that and um when you go more, like high pitch like this, you want like your jaw to come out a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, like, like, and um, just practice that and try to remember that where you're yelling, because that also helps exaggerate your sounds. And um, let me think. Tip number five would be holding the mic, and anything about mics. First off, if you're beginning, you shouldn't be using the mic because mics make you sound like you don't know how to set up a mic and makes it make you sound different. So start off with no mic and just nothing and just use your voice or even once you hold a brush or whatever in your face so you don't feel stupid just yelling and um, get used to how you sound and get practice and then once you think you're good enough, then you can start using the mic. and. Um, one thing that I know for sure is that never hold him even if you're doing clean vocals, never hold up a mic to your mouth like this. Like it's touching your lip. Like at the most it should be maybe like barely touching your bottom lip. But you don't want to hold it like this close to your mouth or anything like that. Especially if you're yelling. If you're yelling, depending like how loud you are, you want to keep it like kind of far back when you're yelling. Like, let me see if I get my brush. Like, um, like like this should be good. You don't want to go close like, like this. If you're whispering, this would be okay. But if you're yelling, you're going to mess up your mic. So you don't want to do that at all. So you want to keep it far back. And the higher, the louder you get, the farther away you get. So if you're screaming on top of your lungs, the highest pitch or lowest pitch you can get. But sound-wise, it's pretty loud. You want to keep it further away. Like if you notice um, singers, when they're performing live, um, because, you know, when they're performing live at a gig or at a concert, 
like you know they add like little accents to her song that wasn't originally there in the recording and you know it's when they're like gonna yell pretty loud in the song or beginning of the song that they slowly pull the mic away that's because like that would ruin her mic if it's too close and yelling too loud and um one thing that people don't know but people always do um don't touch your mic like that to test it out you just want to test test one two three don't ever tap it because that's bad for the mic and um, for mics it's best for you to get a mic with an on or off switch like um, because if you're in a band you'll find out that once you have all those amps around you and everyone has their instruments turned up really high because you know it's metal music that um, your mic's going to start squealing and it's because um, all the amps are there. Even if you have fluorescent lights in like your studio or in your garage, wherever you practice at, that that makes uh, um, sometimes makes the amps um, frequencies a little different. And your amp might sound a little weird. So make sure that um, well, what do you think? Oh, if you're performing live and it's squealing, you want to make sure that um, all the guitar amps are not facing the mic amp. And that um, you never, if you're singing with your mic and whatever, make sure you never stand in front of your mic amp. Because then it will definitely start squealing. So, um, like you find also in concerts that um, those amps that are like on like these little like um, stands on either side like this. Um, those are mic amps. You want the mic amp to be facing outside. Like here's a wall with your band. Like, you want to make it a wall for any instrument other than a mic. I'll make a wall, and then you want your uh, mic amp to be facing out. So that way, it's, as I do with the um, sound waves, that um, the band, the rest of the band's like sound waves will mix in with yours. So the mic amp should be good. And if they do start squealing, um, and you, if you have a mic head, then you want to make sure that um, each lever makes a small like little smiley face and if you don't and you have a beginner amp um before you start screaming just talk into it and if it doesn't sound like your regular voice then fix it and um the more trouble you add to it the more distortion it gets so start off at like a reg I don't want to say like zero but maybe like one for all of them and then slowly work your way up like you know like a regular amp and um once you find um, something that like sounds close to your voice and as close you can you can get, then that's good, and um, you can start yelling into it then. And I think I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, you can. Um, send me something on my channel or post a comment or anything and I'll be more than happy to reply back and give you help and um, that's it